Hello, everybody. And thank you for joining me. Welcome back. And I hope you're all having a great day. I really hope you enjoyed the first episode. And if you did not, then I apologize. Uh, but this next one is going to be a little different. I want to start diving into some of the things in our mindset that can play some tricks on us and can make us kind of feel kind of shitty. So on this next episode, I want to talk about your biggest fear. What is your biggest fear? I want to talk specifically about a quote that I had found. I had found this quote when I was about 16 years old. And I'll get into how I found it in just a minute. But I want to give a little backstory of who said this quote and who they were. Right. So this quote was by Chief Tecumze, and he was a Shawnee warrior chief who served his people from 1768 until 1813. At the age of 45, he died in the War of 1812. And when he was a teenager, he not only despised the white man, right, but because of their tactics, but he also despised some of the people of his tribe and of his ethnic culture because of their methods. And while fighting the Americans, he never lost sight of his goals and plans, and he always fought because he had a fear that the Native Americans were going to lose their way of life. So today, I really want to talk about your biggest fear and how it affects your mindset. Here's the quote. So, live your life that the fear of death can never enter your heart. Trouble no one about their religion. Respect others in their view and demand that they respect yours too. Love your life, perfect your life, and beautify all things in your life. Seek to make your life long and prosperous in the service of your people. And prepare a noble death song for the day when you go over the great divide. Always give a word or a sign of salute when meeting or passing a friend, even a stranger when in a lonely place. Show respect to all and gravel to none. When you rise in the morning, give thanks for the food and the joy of living. If you see no reason for giving thanks, the fault only lies in yourself. Abuse no one and no thing, for abuse turns the wise ones to fools and robs the spirit of its vision. And when it comes time to die, be not like those whose hearts are filled with the fear of death. So when their time comes, they weep and pray for a little more time to live their life over again. In a different way, sing your death song and die like a hero going home. To me, that quote is pretty pretty powerful. There's a lot to digest there, right? And there's a lot of phrases and, and words that he used to represent your life and to represent your service to other people in your life. Let me start by giving you a little backstory. So I found this quote when I was about 16, and I found it when I was on Google searching the average life expectancy for someone with cystic fibrosis. Some of you who know me and some of you who don't, I have a genetic lung disease called cystic fibrosis, and I've never let it affect me. I've never let it take charge of my life, and more importantly, I've never been a victim to it, but it still affects my life every single day. A little uh, a biology lesson. So cystic fibrosis is a genetic lung disease. It's a double recessive disease, so you have to be pretty, pretty lucky to get it because both parents have to have that recessive gene. Now, they test for it in utero, uh, but back when I was in utero, they didn't test for it. So when I was younger uh, and I was a baby, I had a lot, of, a lot of problems. I was born only 2 pounds, 14 ounces. I was 15 inches. And from the time that I was born to the time I was about 2 years old, I was very malnourished. I wouldn't gain weight. I was only always on the 1 percentile scale, and I was very small. And this is obviously now because of my cystic fibrosis, but at the time, my parents didn't know that. So when I was two years old, I got a test, and the test is called a sweat test. It's very simple, it's very easy, but it diagnoses your cystic fibrosis. It's a little, uh, like a button, or like an ankle bracelet that they put on you, uh, and they make you sweat, and when they sweat, it's called a sweat test, and when you sweat, and if it turns red, you have CF, if it stays white, you don't have CF. So... I got this test done when I was about two years old after going to my pediatrician and not understanding why I was crying and colicky for nine and a half months and I was just not gaining any weight. So after being diagnosed with CF, at the time, it was a death sentence, right? It was a death sentence for anybody because 
not only did, was the technology and the medication not adequate, or even if any, but the average age was only 37, right? So me and my wisdom at 16, hearing this, I was scared, right? I was nervous and I didn't want to die. I didn't want to die at a young age. I wanted to live a long and prosperous life. But after someone tells you that you're probably only going to live until you're 37 years old, uh, it really kicks you in between the legs. And it affects everybody a little bit differently, right? There could be two sets of twins and one can be, and they obviously both have CF, one can die when they're nine months old and the other one can die when they're 35 years old or 75 years old. It affects everybody a little differently, not only in how severe you have it, but the symptoms that you get. What I mean by that is CF is not just a lung disease. It affects every single part of your body from your skin to your reproductive organs to your lungs to pretty much about everything. And the way cystic fibrosis or the, the pathology of CF uh, is the sodium in your body is supposed to enter your cell, your lung cell specifically, and exit the cell properly. And by doing that, it breaks down the mucus in your cell. For example, if you are not feeling well and you go down to the beach and you're stuffy and you're coughing, and after going to the beach and taking in that salt air, you usually feel better. You usually feel better and you usually are not congested or as congested as you were. Well, think about that in my body. My body doesn't do that. So when I go to the beach, I feel like a million dollars. I can run for miles at the beach. I can do simply everything, right? But I mean, obviously, before uh, a medication that came out and now has made me feel much better. But the point is, is that my body doesn't break down mucus the same way a normal, <clears throat> excuse me, a normal person does. It also affects your reproductive system because of all the mucus that's in your body, it blocks certain things, right? So it's very difficult for people with CF to have children naturally. And the only reason I'm sharing that is because uh, some other people that might be listening to this might not know. <clears throat> and you have to understand that Again, like I said in the first episode, everybody goes through shit. Everybody goes through problems and issues and challenges. And we forget sometimes that other people go through stuff too, right? And on top of that, I'm sharing it because I want to bring awareness to it. Because one day, I hope there is a cure. Uh, even if I'm dead, there's a cure. So a child that's three years old now can live a long and prosperous life. So... Getting back to the topic of mindset and what I want to talk about today is what is your biggest fear? Now, it may be a little obvious that CF is a fear of mine, but you would be wrong. It's not. CF is not a fear. I have learned to live with it. I've learned to challenge it, and I've learned to challenge myself with it, right? CF is not my fear because when you have a fear of something, especially that you something that you can't control, it can overtake you. It can rattle you and make you feel like you can't control it when you can control it. You just have to learn how, right? My fear of dying young, it's a fear, but it's not a fear, right? Like I've learned to live that everybody dies the circle of life has to happen, right? I wish we could all live forever, but it doesn't happen that way. And obviously dying at a younger age is not something that I want to do, but I take the steps to prevent that from happening, taking my medicine, going to the gym, eating right, and doing the things that are going to set me up for success instead of failure. But I do have a fear of not living up to my full potential. Not living up to the potential of succeeding in the things that I, I want to accomplish. And I feel like a lot of times people have so much more in their life that they can accomplish and they could do so much more, but they limit themselves because of having that victim mentality. And to be honest with you, don't have that victim, that victim mentality because when you do, it stifles you. It 
stops you from growing. And to be quite honest with you, I had that for a little while. I had it for, I'd say, a year. And then I really learned to get myself out of it because it was not allowing me to grow. It was not allowing me to live up to my full potential because I, if I failed at something or didn't do something, I'd use the cystic fibrosis as a scapegoat. And I'm so pissed at myself for doing that because I never did. And specifically one event that I couldn't control, I couldn't do anything for, it was completely out of my control. But it made me feel like a failure. It made me feel like a failure because I've always accomplished things in my life. And then that one time that I didn't, it made me so fucking angry. It made me so mad. And to this day, it is one of one of the things that just it's it doesn't it doesn't make me angry anymore. It makes me disappointed. It makes me disappointed because I see other people in that position, uh, in that job specifically, and I'll be honest, I'm jealous. I, I'm jealous of, of the of the job that I couldn't have. Yes, I do a great profession every day because I get to help people. But, and now to also take that with, you can have a job every day that you go to, but do you like that job? Do you enjoy doing that job? Because if you don't, then you should switch it. Obviously, financially, it might be difficult, but we only have one life. We only have one life to live. And if you limit yourself by just having a monetary amount of money that you have to take in but hate your fucking job, what, what, what happiness is that, right? Like, I, I am a big, firm believer that you should love your job. And if you don't, then change it. So, moving on, uh, going back to the quote for a minute. I had this quote hanging in my office when I was a lieutenant of EMS. And I had it in my office be- for two reasons. Number one, uh, I didn't want to fail, right? I didn't want to fail as a leader because I see, I've see i seen poor leadership. Not so much at that time, uh, but I've seen it in other places and, and I've heard it from other people and I understand what poor leadership could be. And I never wanted to be that person that let other people down. I didn't want to be that person that if someone came to me and they brought up a problem or they brought up a concern that I was going to be the person to just brush them off. Right. That, that wasn't the person that I wanted to be, or I didn't succeed in fixing their problems because I came to me. I got put into a position of leadership to help people. And yes, not with obviously not with medicine, but in a uh, administrative situation or, or position, and by doing that, and yeah, obviously in the street too, but more in a leadership position of administration. To if, that, if someone came to me and go, "Hey, I need a problem with this," uh, I wanted to be able to help them. And maybe I failed at it, and maybe I didn't do so well. And if those of you who know me were, were under me, uh, and I didn't do it right, or I did something wrong, I apologize. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that I was the best, because I know I wasn't. But I tried to be. I tried to be better, and I tried to be the person that people, somebody can rely on. Not in the EMS sense, but in a leadership role. I also had kind of a a little bit of a fear of letting down the people that were higher up than me down. And what I mean by that is not obviously in age, but in the, in the, in the rank position, because when I went into this position, I was young and I wanted to prove to them that just because I was young, I could still do the tasks and the things that they asked. And again, maybe I didn't do them as well as I could have done them. And looking back, I tr- maybe I sh- could have changed some things. But hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Like it, you can sit here and, and Monday morning quarterback yourself all day. But how is that? What can you? I could use that to in the in the future to be able to grow, right? Look at that situation. And be like, hey, what can I change? What can I do to be better? And I can apply that to growing, right? And that fear, or more of the not wanting to disappoint people in the in a, in a higher rank than me, 
was because they led me to a point that allowed me to be confident enough to lead. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I don't want to fail them by not giving it my all. Right. I also, I also wanted to not fail and had a fear of failure in that because at that time I was going through some hard times and I was going through some difficulties in my life. And some of those people were there to show me and guide me in the right direction. And now if I went into a position of leadership and I didn't do that for somebody else, like what the hell, right? Other people did it for me. So why not? Why can't I be that person to give it back to them? Right? So the fear of failure, your biggest fear in life, it takes all shapes and sizes, right? It cannot be one specific thing. Now, listen, it could be a tangible thing, right? Like, oh, I take it back. Well, I, 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 that could be a tangible thing, right? Like the fear of, of heights, right? A lot of people fear heights. And now that could be for the fear of falling, and that, 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 uh, that positive G that you get, right? In your, in your belly when you, you have a, when you take off in an airplane. Well, that's really when you descend in an airplane, rather. Um, or when you go over a bump in the road and your car catches some air, right? Or you could just have a fear of death, right? You're falling to your death, right? You fall off the Empire State Building and you have a probably 30 second drop where you just, <laughs> it's, not, it's like the fall, not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden stop, right? But it could also be a car accident, right? It could be a car accident because they're pay- you could be m- m- maimed, right? You might not be able to ever walk again. You could be paralyzed. It might be painful. You might break some bones, right? The loss of money, you have to replace a car, right? Maybe that car has some uh, value to your life that's not tangible. Like your your family member who bought that car for you died three months ago, and now you have that car, and now you just totaled it because someone was driving uh, and not doing the right thing. So fear of life or fear in our life rather takes many shapes and sizes and forms. Specifically for me, again, it's me not living up to my full potential. And I don't know if it's because I don't like losing. (laughs) I want to be honest, I don't like losing. But I think it's because at the age of 16, when I really found out that the average age of someone with CF was 37, I started piling a lot of things into my life to try to accomplish things. And that wasn't looking back now. I don't know if that's what I was doing. And I honestly wasn't. I was just very goal oriented when I was when I was younger, because I wanted to accomplish shit. I wanted to be that person. I wanted to be that dude that was the jack of all trades that did everything right. And as I got older, I found myself shying away from that a little bit. And I found myself stagnant. And yes, obviously COVID happened. And there was a three-year hiatus of things that you couldn't do, like go outside and fucking fish because the politicians told you that you couldn't, right? Like, I'm outside. Leave me alone. Fuck off. But the point is is that as I got older, I stopped really, truly becoming goal-oriented and striving for the things that I wanted to do. And by doing this podcast and in the beginning of the year, setting my mind to accomplishing more, I needed to get back to that. I was stagnant. My mind was super stagnant and I hated that feeling. And I hated that feeling of not accomplishing everything that I set my mind to. That fear of failing, not your life, but achieving the things that you want in your life. Another part of this is how do we get over those fears, right? Like you could have all of the fears in the world, falling, heights, car accident, for Christ's sake, arachnophobia, like how do, but how do you get over those fears? And there's a bunch of ways, right? One of them, and I think the most simple way is just by exposure, right? If you're exposed to a conditioned problem or a condition 
over and over and over and over and over again, you build a tolerance to it. An example of this is a dog, right? If your dog hates fireworks, but you for the next, and you find out when they're one year, a year old, on 4th of July, that they absolutely despise fireworks, go home and put them on the TV. Put it on the TV and condition them over and over and over and over and over again for the next year that fireworks are not bad. Give them treats, put the sound on the TV, and condition them by exposure to not fear it. And we could do the same thing with humans, right? We are, we are animals too. We just are a different species, right? You could also understand why you have that fear, right? I feel like a lot of times when we don't understand the why and we don't ask that why question, it gives us doubt or it gives us some sort of insecurity of not knowing what that that fear is, right? And why it is a fear. So, for example, if you fear spiders, why do you fear spiders? Do you not like the actual thing crawling on you? Are you feared that it's going to bite you? Like, understand why it is. And if you understand why, then maybe you can take some spe- steps to mitigate that fear that you have. Another thing you could do is meditation. Now, a lot of people don't meditate, and I tried it, and it is really, really difficult. If you have never tried the true art of meditation, it is extremely difficult. And it takes years. Look at the Buddhist monks. It takes them a lifetime, a lifetime to properly meditate and properly get their mind into a place that's peaceful, right? And if you've never sat and just try to just blank your mind out, right? Never try to just, just blank your mind out and don't think of anything. And listen, if you could do that, I mean, fuck, good for you, man. Like, I, it is very difficult for me uh, because my mind is always going. It's always racing. It's always thinking of the next step. It's always thinking of something. And I really wanted to meditate to try to learn how to calm my mind down, calm myself down to a point where it just, my body just relaxes, right? And if you could try to sit without thought, just in the moment, sit without thought. It's really, really difficult. So that now that I have shared a little bit of my fear, I want to pose this question to you. What is your fear? What is your fear either tangibly, mentally, or something that really makes you feel uneasy? Again, is it family-related? Is it individually related? Is it watching your son or daughter not achieve greatness? What is your fear? Like the quote says, I personally, when I was 60 years old, I, or when I'm 60, I don't want to be that person with regret. I don't want to be that person that when I am hopefully in a nursing home and my kids and grandkids are running around, and I'm with my wife in a nursing home. I don't want to be that person with regret. I don't want to live my life thinking and possibly having the potential to do more, but I didn't do it because I was scared. I just couldn't, or I just didn't want to, right? And I've never been any of those, and I don't want to start that now. And like I said, that that stagnant time that I had really made me realize I needed to get back to it. I needed to get back to being the person that I was when I was younger. And again, it's not it's not that I was just like, oh, fuck, I'm not going to do anything today. But I always, I mean, when I was 19 years old, I had my pilot's license, right? And I went through a two-year issue with the FAA to try to get my medical because of my CF. I went through every single test you could possibly imagine from them, a stress test. Uh, it's called a bubble study where they pump bubbles into your heart to see if you have a hole in your heart to doing serial amounts of uh, breath tests to see what my lung function was. Like it was just one after the other. And every time I thought I would meet their standard and the things that they wanted to do, they gave me another test to do. But 
I didn't shy away from it. And I said, I'm going to kick it in the teeth and I'm going to go do it and I'm going to win. And I did. And I did. And I wanted to get back to that mindset. I wanted to get back to that mindset of fighting and being the best that I could be every single day and living up to my full potential to be the best person. So when I have kids, I can say, hey, look, Junior, I have always been that fighting spirit. I've always achieved the things that I wanted to achieve. Now you go and do that. It's your life, not mine, right? I, I did the things that I wanted to in my life. And my fear of not living up to my full potential, I want to pass that to my child. So my child never lives with regret, never lives with any sort of doubt in their mind that when they're older, they can't achieve or can't do something because they have a fear of it. Like a, a, another example, right? COVID. I had cystic, I have cystic fibrosis, right? Yeah. And I, there was a period of time I didn't work because we didn't understand what COVID truly was. But I see now people driving around in their car with their windows down and N95 on and goggles. Like what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? If you have a point in your life that you're so scared of something that you let it control your life, like why? why? How can you get yourself to that point? And again, I understand that people have anxiety. I understand that people have an issue with certain things in their life. But you have to learn how to just like tame it a little bit and get it under control. And if you can't, seek help, right? Like no one should ever live in a world where you're so scared of everything. And for me, that fear of not living up to my full potential is where the buck stops, right? Like, again, I never want to be that person when I'm older that fears, I'm sorry, that regrets things because I feared them, right? Growing into your full potential and stepping outside your comfort zone, again, has its own sets of challenges, right? And I'm not talking physical challenges. I'm talking, talking mental challenges. These mental challenges that you have are, are what our mindset and what specifically this podcast and what I want to talk about is how your mindset f triggers into those things. Like for me... I had to have a little bit of an introspective look at myself and say, hey, look, I accomplished all these things when I was younger, and now I'm stagnant. What can I do to get back to accomplishing things? And now I'm not saying it has to be, you have to be an astronaut or you have to be a fucking Navy SEAL, like uh, small accomplishments, right? Like going to the gym every day, eating right every day. And maybe it's bigger ones. Maybe it's going to get your pilot's license. Maybe it's going to get your skydiving certification. Like, those things achieve over time become a pamphlet and an entire book of the things that you have accomplished. But your mindset has to be in the right place in order for you to go accomplish those things. Because if you don't, if you don't have the right mindset in order to do those things and accomplish it, you're never going to do it. And sometimes it's just simply saying, okay, I'm just going to go do it. Don't think about it. Just go do it. Uh, now I'm, I'm not talking about like something where you're going to get hurt. I'm talking about don't overthink it, right? Don't have analysis by paralysis. Like don't get yourself into a corner where you suffocate yourself because you look at every little aspect because I have and it doesn't really do it much for me. Like just go and do it. Just go and do it and sometimes it just takes that first little step or maybe that take, takes that person to just give you a little tap from behind to go and do it. And by you doing it, it allows you to grow and be a better person. And by growing and being a better person, that's all it is, man. 1% at a time. 1% at a time to grow and be a better person. So thank you for joining me on this episode. This really, to me, is something that really hits home. Because not only is the quote something that I try to live by every day, but also not live in fear and go and accomplish the shit that you want to accomplish. Don't be scared of it. You take control of it. You take control of your life and don't let something else or someone else control you. Again, if you have any sort of questions, if you want to reach out to me, 
My Instagram is tread underscore 323. You could email me at coldheartedtruthpodcast at gmail.com. And I look forward to you seeing you all on, on the next episode. And thanks for joining me.